Alexander the Great remarked that the peoples of Asia were slaves because they had not learned to pronounce the word no. As Prime Minister, Sir Winston Churchill rallied the British people during World War II and led his country from the brink of defeat to victory. Churchill's life was a trajectory of events leading to his stand against Adolf Hitler's threat to control Europe. After the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, Churchill helped lead the successful Allied strategy during World War II to defeat the Axis powers and craft post-war peace. After the breakdown of the alliance, he alerted the West of the expansionist threat of Soviet communism. He was born to an aristocratic family on November 13, 1874. As his life unfolded, he displayed the traits of his father, Lord Randolph Churchill a British statesman from an established English family, and his mother, Janet Jenny Jerome, an independent-minded New York socialite. As a young child, Churchill grew up in Dublin, Ireland, where his father was employed by his grandfather, the 7th Duke of Marlborough, John Spencer Churchill. When he entered formal school, Churchill proved to be an independent and rebellious student. He did poorly at his first two schools, and in April 1888, he was sent to Harrow School, a boarding school near London. Within weeks of his enrollment, he joined the Harrow Rifle Corps, which put him on a path to a military career. At first, it didn't seem the military was a good choice for Churchill. It took him three tries to pass the exam for the British Royal Military College. However, once there, he did well and graduated 20th in his class of 113. Up to this time, his relationship with both his mother and father was distant, though he adored them both. While at school, Churchill wrote emotional letters to his mother, begging her to come see him, but she seldom came. His father died when he was 21, and it was said that Churchill knew him more by reputation than by any close relationship they shared. In 1900, Churchill became a member of parliament in the Conservative Party for Oldham, a town in Manchester. Following his father into politics, he also followed his father's sense of independence, becoming a supporter of social reform. In January 1911, Churchill showed his tougher side when he made a controversial visit to a police siege in London. Police had surrounded the house where two robbers had been caught. Churchill's decree of participation is still in some dispute. Some accounts have him going to the scene only to see for himself what was going on. Others state that he allegedly gave directions to police on how to best storm the building. What is known is that the house caught fire during the siege and Churchill prevented the fire brigade from extinguishing the flames, stating that he thought it's better to let the house burn down rather than risk lives rescuing the occupants. The bodies of the two robbers were found inside the charred ruins. While serving as First Lord of the Admiralty since 1911, Churchill helped modernize the British Navy, ordering that new warships be built with oil-fired instead of coal-fired engines. He was one of the first to promote military aircraft and set up the Royal Navy Air Service. He spent the next few years concentrating on his writing and published a history of English-speaking people. In a sense, the whole of Churchill's previous career had been a preparation for wartime leadership. On 3rd September 1939, the day Britain declared war on Germany, Chamberlain appointed Churchill to his old post in charge of the Admiralty. The signal went out to the fleet, Winston is back! When Hitler launched his sudden attack on the Soviet Union, Churchill's response was swift. In a broadcast on 22 June 1941, while refusing to unsay any of his earlier criticism of communism, he insisted that the Russian danger is our danger, and pledged aid to the Russian people. Henceforth, it was his policy to construct a grand alliance incorporating the Soviet Union and the United States, but it took until May 1942 to negotiate a 20-year Anglo-Soviet Pact of Mutual Assistance. 
The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor altered, in Churchill's eyes, the whole prospect of the war. He went at once to Washington DC and, with Roosevelt, hammered out a set of Anglo-American accords. The pooling of both countries' military and economic resources under combined boards and the combined chiefs of staff, the establishment of unity of command in all theaters of war, and agreement on the basic strategy that the defeat of Germany should have priority over the defeat of Japan. The Grand Alliance had now come into being, Churchill could claim it to be its principal architect. Safeguarding was the primary concern of his next three and a half years. In June 1953, at age 78, he suffered from a series of strokes at his office, located at 10 Downing Street. The news was kept from the public and parliament, with the official announcement stating that he had suffered from exhaustion. He recuperated at home and returned to his work as Prime Minister in October. However, it was apparent even to him that he was physically and mentally slowing down. Churchill retired as Prime Minister in 1955. He remained a member of Parliament until the general election of 1964, when he did not seek re-election. There were speculations that Churchill suffered from Alzheimer's disease in his last years, but many medical experts felt that his reduced mental capacity was more a result of the strokes he had suffered. Despite his poor health, Churchill was able to remain active in public life, albeit mostly from the comfort of his homes in Kent and Hyde Park Gate in London. On January 5, 1965, Churchill suffered a severe stroke that left him gravely ill. He died at his London home nine days later at age 19 on January 24, 1965. Britain mourned for more than a week.